Well, hello and welcome to another Career Codex video. My name is Simon Gray and I help executive job seekers navigate the job market successfully. Now, uh, the, weather's, uh, the weather's quite nice today, so uh, I decided to record this outside and uh, let's hope the, uh, the weather holds. So um, in recent weeks, I've been discussing LinkedIn in quite some detail. And uh, if you've read, listened to or watched any of the content, you'll know how important your professional headline is. Linked to LinkedIn, uh, if I can say that, in today's video, I'm looking at business cards and specifically what to include as a job title. If you have a job or run your own business, deciding what to put on your business card can be somewhat of a conundrum. And uh, although uh, I personally ditched business cards uh, a little while back, uh, principally in favor of, uh, of LinkedIn or, or putting people's contact details directly in my phone, uh, I still have a, a, an email signature. Uh, I still need to call my some, myself something on LinkedIn. And uh, this, uh, this is somewhat, uh, or can sometimes be a difficult, uh, difficult decision. Uh, a business card has no value in your pocket. Instead, it needs to be out there in the hands of important contacts, decision makers and uh, prospects, which means your job title needs to be less about you and more about the people you're trying to reach. It has to resonate with them. And uh, let's be honest, we all make assumptions about people we meet and their job title uh, often has quite a lot to do with how we feel about them. As, uh, as human beings, we have a, a huge amount of, uh, of information to process uh, each and every day and uh, simply don't have the time to analyze everything we possibly could uh, to make a truly informed decision. Uh, instead, we use filters and uh, these are based on our past and things we're often, uh, un often consciously unaware of uh, to make some of uh, life's most important decisions. So we may convince ourselves we are rational and logical human beings, but uh, the fact of the matter is that uh, logic usually plays second fiddle to impulse. Let's, uh, let's take a quick look at, uh, at an example and uh, think about the interview environment when it comes to uh, an interview scenario. Being met by the chairman instead of the CEO might increase the fear factor associated with any pending meeting. But should this really be the case? Similarly, when it comes to uh, reaching out to decision makers, it may feel like a safer and easier option to approach the HR director instead of the CEO. But again, is this accurate thinking? My advice is always to reach out to the top. It may seem more difficult, but in actual fact, it's much easier. And in my experience, leads to a higher probability of uh, success for three principal reasons. Number one, people at the top of an organization are easier to identify. They tend to appear in corporate literature and in press media interviews as the spokesperson for their organizations. Number two, there is often less competition for their attention because others will perceive them as more difficult to, uh, to reach, your message has more chance of getting through. And finally, number three, they can generate what I call a top-down referral. Even if you don't get to speak to the decision maker directly, there is a probability they will pass you to someone else within the organization, uh, which comes with a, an implicit, uh, I guess, endorsement that you're someone important who warrants a response. Back in the day running my own uh, recruitment company, this is the strategy I use day in, day out, and uh, I would always adopt when prospecting for new business. And it's a similar strategy that I teach my executive clients who are looking to identify and capitalize on career opportunities that exist in the hidden market. And this is the place where high probability executive job opportunities always exist before being advertised on executive job boards or indeed positioned by executive search firms in the public domain. Getting back to the title uh, of, this, uh, of this video, uh, and, in my, and in my opinion, possibly the best job title that I've ever seen grace the front of someone's business card. Instead of uh, plumping for the obvious managing director, uh, the person in question selected uh, Chief Disruptor as their badge of office. And uh, it certainly grabbed my attention. And uh, although this meeting happened, well, probably over three months, uh, three months ago, I'm still telling this story to anyone who'll listen. Think about how we move forward in life, either personally or professionally. It's never about the status quo. And instead, it's about stepping out of our existing comfort zone as a catalyst for change. As uh, the automotive tycoon Henry Ford is credited with, uh, with saying, if you always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got. So if we don't want to stand still, disruption has to be at the heart of everything we do. Now, I'm not, uh, I'm not suggesting you change your, your job title, 
uh, to find success in the executive job market. But what I am saying is that following the majority can never be a winning strategy. At the senior end of the market, where competition for lucrative positions is fierce, taking a different approach as a minority is what leads to a higher probability of finding and securing the position you really want ahead of your competition. While the word disruptive at first glance, let's be honest, it, it does have perhaps negative connotations. A disruptive mindset, on the other hand, is the oil that has and will lubricate the machine of progress, past, present and future. So the next time you're tempted to fall into line or follow the crowd, perhaps pause and ask yourself the question, what could I do differently here to generate a better result? If you have any feedback or questions, please feel free to uh, leave a comment uh, under the video or get in touch with me at careercodex.com or on LinkedIn. My username is Simon Gray, that's G-R-A-Y-A-C-A. -A. So that's it for this week. Uh, about to enjoy the weekend. You have a great weekend. And uh, until next time, take care and I'll talk to you soon.